So I want to give my quick thoughts on The Northman, directed by Robert Eggers and starring Alexander Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Nicole Kidman. The plot of this movie is basically Hamlet. And if you don't know what Hamlet is, it means you are even less read than I am, and that's saying a lot. But basically, Hamlet is what The Lion King was also based on as well, so basically it's an R-rated Viking version of Lion King. A boy's uncle kills his father for unknown reasons, and he and he disappears and vows to get revenge when he's an adult. The plot is, is very straightforward, which threw me off because the movie is extremely long. And normally when a movie is very long, it means it has a lot of complicated story going on. Unless you're Dear Hansen, in which case you just dragged ass for an hour. So I wasn't sure what to make of this. The trailer looked pretty cool and it has a star-studded cast and a director who apparently has done good things. I've never seen any of his work, but, but this had a lot of promise to it. And this is, I'm not going to have a ton to say about this movie, but that's because it's actually pretty good. If it was bad, I could, have rant, I could rant about it for a while, but honestly, it's good, and there's not a ton to say about it. The acting, of course, is stellar. It has, it has a really good cast here. I was going to start, so Garsgard makes for a really compelling lead. Anya Taylor-Joy does pretty good in her role as, I guess... As just some other person who's sold him slavery, like he is. Nicole Kidman plays his mother, who ends up marrying, who is, marries his uncle after his father is murdered. And we'll get to her in a bit. We'll get more into her character in a bit. Ethan Hawke plays his father, who dies in the first ten minutes. That's not a spoiler, that was the entire point of the plot. Like, you go on Wikipedia, you go to the trailer, we all know what happens, so it's not a spoiler. Willem Dafoe's in this for three minutes and doesn't really do much. Okay, and all the actors do their job pretty good. The action sequences, I wasn't expecting there to be many, especially since the trailer didn't really highlight the action, but there are quite a few and they're really good. I really like the, basically the raid that they do about 20 minutes into the movie. It reminded me a lot of Assassin's Creed and I'm here for it. So, it was, a, it was a lot of fun to watch, and I like that during these action sequences, they're almost always done in one take. And the only time you'll see a cut in these is if it's cutting away from the fight, or if it needs to cut to get more close and personal during the final fight. Like, every once in a while you'll get a cut. And, like, mostly near the end of the fight, but the rest of it's done in one, in one shot. And I can always applaud when people can do this well. When people can't do it well, such as The Last Airbender, for example, it looks incredible. It look, one, it looks gimmicky. Two, the timing was always off in that movie. Like, everything was so damn slow. I don't know why they were proud of that. And the shots just weren't very well laid out. In this movie, the shots are very well laid out. You can see everything perfectly. This reminded me a lot of that one long take from Extraction. I will say Extraction was was actually better in this department because it had a lot of a lot more stuff going on, a lot more stunts, a lot more fast paced stuff going on. So I think it was more impressive, and there were a lot of running around, so it was a, it was a little more impressive. But this one kind of reminded me of kind of reminded me of Shang Chi, but Shang Chi did a lot of like uh, spinning shots with it, keeping it in one take, which I thought was pretty cool. This one it's usually kept in one place unless someone's like walking around and then killing people like that, and it's always done pretty well. Especially the final fight is nor nor mostly kept in one frame. It's usually kept in in just this one shot, but the camera does move around a bit, so it's not you're not just watching a one sterile shot of two people trying to kill each other with a sword. So Robert Eggers shows his merit as a director here. It's my first movie first movie of his I've seen, and I was very impressed with his directing. This does make some changes, because it was always, it was adapted from Hamlet. Like, they didn't hide that. I, I recognized that by looking at the synopsis on online, so I, I figured out it was Hamlet right off the bat. And I looked it up, was it adapted from Hamlet? And it was. It did make some significant changes, though, which I am here for. I've said many times that I hate when adaptations try to do it one for one, because usually it doesn't, unless you're a Harry Potter or the first Narnia movie, it doesn't work. Because it comes across as because it comes across as really boring and having no identity of its own. So th this just seemed to hit that middle ground. It had a, it got its own unique spin and has some changes to it. This is where we get into Nicole Kidman's character, and there will be spoilers from here on out. So this 
I couldn't figure out if I liked this change or not. And I'm still trying to figure that out. It was appar apparently in this version, she w she was uh, brought into slavery under um, Hawk's character, the king. I don't remember his name. And he and Amleth, the main character, was born out of rape, apparently. And she begged or begged the uncle Fjolnir. I can't remember. I can't remember most people's names because they're all they're all medieval Viking names, and I can't pronounce them for shit. So if I mispronounce a name, now you know why. Or if I don't remember somebody's name, but she begged him to kill his brother. And so that was the, the twist in the movie that she wanted him to kill. She had him kill him. Because, and I'm still kind of split on this change. I do appreciate them doing something incredibly bold with this story. I do appreciate I do appreciate the balls on these filmmakers for doing something like that. But I'm still not convinced it was better. I'm like it, I'm kind of half and half. Like I know what they were going for, but I'm not entirely sure if they got all the way there. And I I do like the scenes where he's like where Amleth is in slavery under his uncle, where he's trying where he's like plotting to kill him. And there's even one scene where he's able to gain his trust by saving his son from, from, during his, like, some kind of game, like, some kind of ball game, I don't remember what it's called, but it becomes very violent, and the son, who's, like, ten fucking years old, uh, jumps in the middle of it for some reason, it's never made clear, and he almost ends up basically getting his brain bashed in by the ball, like, some dude basically golfing ball hitting him right in the head, kind of like Croquet, but, um, and the Amleth jumps in and saves him, trying to gain respect of the king. And I like that. I really do. And then the, the night raids start where he starts killing people, like, just a few at a time every night. And it reminded me a lot of the Maze Runner book where they took one kid at a time. And it built a lot of suspense, and it was it was really good. I liked it. I liked how they did it. I liked the suspense they were building up. I liked how he did it very strategically. Not really sure how, the, how he was able to escape... Uh, his captivity several times to sneak out in the middle of the night to kill them in the first place. That's never really made clear, but honestly, that's a minor gripe there. And like I said, all the characters are at least semi-interesting. Again, I'm still kind of split on what they did with the mother, but the uncle, he's a he's an interesting villain. I like and the son he has, the eldest son, once again, can't remember his name, but he was an okay secondary villain, I think. And the way he killed him was pretty cool, actually. I like Amleth, I like Olga, I like all the, yeah, I like the dynamic they have, the romance doesn't feel entirely forced, it does kind of come out of nowhere, but it's not entirely forced, and then we have the final showdown between Amleth and his father, which I already said was done in one take, and I like, I like how this movie ended, where they basically ended up killing each other. Once again, that was a big change, but in this version, I think it really worked, because it had him going up to Valhalla, as the ending. And I think that was an okay change. And there, there's, of course, other changes sprinkled throughout here, but honestly, they're not really worth getting into. Like I said, this is probably going to be a really short review. How long's it been? Yeah, it's been eight and a half minutes. It's been longer than I thought. But yeah, I already said, the action's pretty good. The acting's all stellar. The story works, and I like, the, I like most of the changes. Some I'm still kind of split on, and some I didn't really care for. But and the the musical score is really good. It really feels like a Viking epic with with the with the really uh, mix of like like a Norse music and everything. It really works. And there was some kind of opening monologue. I don't remember. I don't know who it was by. Cause it was just like a shot of a volcano for some reason, uh, talking to Odin and all that. And I'm like, okay, this is a weird way to start, but I'm here for it. And one thing I do have to say is that the first fifteen minutes of this were pretty slow. Like, before the king is murdered, I was starting to think this is going to be one hell of a slog, isn't it? But after he dies and he goes off and joins this little, and is picked up by these, like, I don't know what to call them, just a Viking group, I guess, the movie really started to pick up. So, I, I, th I and I think it really worked. And I like how, the way he's able to move around and snuck aboard a slave ship in order to go after his uncle, where he was basically free before that and basically sold himself to slavery just so he could get revenge on his uncle. It was a decent idea. 
So, yeah, definitely go see this movie. Uh, even if you're not a huge fan of Vikings, of Viking movies, I think you can still get something out of it. Uh, if you like Assassin's Creed games, you'll probably like this movie. So, yeah, that's all I got for The Northman. I know this is pretty short, but I said it was going to be. I'm going to give The Northman a B+. That seems right. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, what do you think? What did you think of The Northman? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay? Did you like the ad Did you like the changes they made? Did you not? Uh, are you even seeing this movie? Because it came in in fourth place at the box office behind The Bad Guys, Sonic 2 in its third weekend, and Fantastic Beasts 3 in its second weekend. Which, the fact that Fantastic Beasts 3 can't even beat Sonic 2, despite coming out a week later, shows how little people give a crap about that movie. And it only made like $1.2 million more than The Northman did, so... Or maybe it was like 3.2. I don't know. I don't care. Fantastic Beasts sucks. This movie's a lot better. So... Yeah, that's all I got, and I'm gonna go play some Assassin's Creed. So.